Welcome to the new IT. Welcome to the new IT today in the house, Mr. Brad. What's going on in the world of technology craziness? Yeah, I don't know. Do I ever know? <laughs> we just live in that world. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're just kind of there every now and again. Uh, no, I'm actually excited for today's show. So we have we're we're diving into the world of of the dent the dental, I guess when uh, the I dental know, is that right? Maybe we, the dental the dental side of things. <laughs> the dental side of things. The dental we're side gonna of find technology. Out who, who we got on the show today? What's what's happening? I'm actually really excited. Like I said, I mean, so we have Ryan from Ultra Dent in in studios. Ultra Dent, right? I exactly. like the name. You sure do. I can tell. <laughs> Ultra Dent. I just want to say it all the time. Right. Uh, so we're gonna find out from Ryan yeah. all about Ultra Dent and what's going on there and technology and the craziness alike. All the cool yeah. things they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. all of it. <laughs> so we like. We, let's just turn the time over to Ryan for a minute. Tell us a little bit about you. How you got in with Ultra Dent or or in the the world of technology. You just kind of you just kind of feel free. Let's get relaxed and get to know you. Sure. Yeah. The uh, the uh, elevator pitch on me and who I am. My background is that uh, I've been working in technology basically since I was a kid. I got my first technical certification when I was in the fifth grade doing some basic wow. programming on an Apple IIc computer. So that dates me a little bit. Wow. In the mid '80s. Awesome. And so yeah. So I you know I I've been messing with technology since literally I was a kid. And then I would go into my dad's office on weekends and stuff when he had to work on Saturdays, and I'd go in and start messing with the older IBM computers. You know that were the big in the day and uh, learn to program basic and fix hardware and do all that kind of stuff. And I've been working in technology basically ever since. So I'm kind of just... This is old school right here. He knows he comes from the world of crazy... Back when it was really hard. Right, exactly. (laughs) Now everything is so... Command prompt world, right? (laughs) Yeah, command prompt world. None of this drag and drop programming. I mean, come on. Anybody can do that, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. okay, maybe not anybody. Still have to have the mind for it, right? Exactly. I would so, think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just been in technology ever since. And uh, so, yeah, I've worked in primarily in the network engineering side of things as mm-hmm. I got into more of my professional uh, career. And so, you know, Cisco engineering, a lot of that kind of stuff early on in the days. And then uh, got into general IT management, at, at, you know, along the way and have been in IT management since the early 2000s and so i've been with ultra dent i started there in uh 2002 so i've been there a long time now. oh wow i just wow. hit my 20 year mark with ultra 2002 dent. yeah that is a feat in the technology world 20 years i'm, in I'm in the standard. same yeah. company that's yeah. that's unheard of any well nowadays it, it is that is crazy cool yeah so it is, it is an anomaly in today's world but uh we've got a good size it operation at ultra dent and so just for those that aren't familiar ultra dent um is based here in the salt lake area South Jordan specifically, and manufactures like all the stuff your dentist uses. So all if, the stuff. All the stuff. You yep. look around a dental office, all this stuff that that's there for restorations, for teeth whitening, and all that kind of stuff. Anything the dentist might be using, including the hand tools and everything. We manufacture, you know, curing lights and all the, you know, miscellaneous things you see there in a dental office. And so <sighs> it's a manufacturing operation, primarily, you know, R&D, sales and marketing, all the usual functions. But, um, yeah, so we've got an IT organization that supports a pretty broad spectrum of systems and and needs and uh, i started out there managing the the infrastructure team in the service desk okay and then over just had more responsibility layered on over time and started running the entirety of the it organization about seven eight years ago and uh and then just as of recent also in charge of the corporate strategy side of the company as well so you and i talked like i want to say a couple weeks ago and it was really astounding to me that uh has as big of a team as you have Remind me again. It was like ninety people on we're about the IT 90, side. Yeah, we're about ninety people. Ninety on IT. strong wow. in, in your technology department. Exactly. Yeah, in IT, and we're we're Is supporting that with about developers eight. and everything, or that's just yeah. So I mean, the, the basics of what we've got, we've got a development team, um, software developers, engineers, testers, that, those Some kind of database folks. guys. Yeah, we got the data team. We got the infrastructure guys doing the networking mm-hmm. and systems, data center stuff. We got the service desk. Um, and uh, then we've got a, a pretty good stable, too, of uh, business analysts that are helping do, like, ERP-type work and things mm-hmm. like that, CRM, you know, all the different business applications, mm-hmm. the folks that have to support those. Mm-hmm. So we got quite a few folks that are that are doing all that, and then the security function. And So around the world, you guys do stuff around the world, uh, yeah. mostly in the U.S., or just all over? All, when it comes to dental stuff, you guys are the, in the mix. 
Yeah, we're a worldwide brand, and so we sell into most countries in the U.S. or in the world. Um, there's only a handful of countries we don't sell into. We've got operations around the world as well, mostly sales and marketing type operations outside the U.S., but we do have a facility that manufactures in Brazil. And uh, um, yeah, but most of our the, the, the hub or concentration of the team is here in the Salt Lake area, just down the road, actually, from where we're recording this. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Cool. It's funny. Things like that. It, it always. It, it's interesting to me that we don't. We don't think about where stuff comes from. <laughs> you don't. Nowadays, you, you really don't. don't. You're just. You're. You're grateful you got it, and then that's that. Uh, that that's super cool. I. We like to ask. We like to start off with asking. How would you say that your company, the company, is? a disruptor in the technology world of that industry. Would you say it's a disruptor? And and what are you guys doing as far as technology goes to be a disruptor? Yeah, so if you're talking technology, like within um, our actual product offering and things of that nature, the majority of our expertise, um, I would say, is is in the chemistry side of things. And so we spend a lot of time cool. developing, um, you know, these various chemistries that go into your mouth to fix a cavity after the, you know, after it's been drilled out by the dentist and all that kind of stuff. And so we have, you know, a lot of uh, folks with those kind of skill sets. And so when you talk about product innovation and things of that nature, a lot of that is done, you know, on the chemical side of the house. But we also have some small equipment and stuff as well. So like the Velo curing light, which is our you know, when they put the resin it's in that the little mouth, blue thing little in there, blue light that goes in and causes hardens the everything. resin to harden. Yeah. Yeah, it's like exactly. magic. I just call right? it magic. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, we manufacture those, but those are small digital instruments, you know, that have some cool features now with gestures and even, you know, just like you would have with stuff you might see at CES wow. and that kind of stuff. So how does, I, 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 this is just for me, I just got to understand, how does a technology like that come about? Do you get, does, is there some university somewhere that's playing with something and then you guys catch wind of it and you like, hey, do, can we do this in production? I mean, I can't imagine, that's gotta be hard to figure out and do, like a new technology comes out, do you guys get wind of it? How does that, like for? It's I, all of the above. Yeah. And so, right. yeah, gotta somet- be, sometimes. I'm mind, mind blown. Exactly. Sometimes it's completely just engineered in-house. You know, it's an idea that our R&D organization or one of our clinicians has, and we develop the product just 100% in-house. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, we have a great reputation out there of being collaborative and all that kind of stuff. So we might have, could even be a doctor who has an idea for a product and they prototype it and stuff. And they're like, hey, I need help commercializing this. And they come to us and we wow. will help That's them. Cool. We, so we've partnered that way. We've done partnerships with universities and other, you know, mechanisms as well. All so of the all above. Of, you weren't kidding. Above. Yeah, <laughs> all of the above. So we've got a catalog with thousands of products in there. And so there's a lot of that kind of innovation work going on at any given time. Holy Just off curiosity, like how many SKUs do you have that? I mean, you said thousands. I don't know the exact, but it's thousands. we got about okay. a, a half inch thick catalog okay. full of Holy our products. And, that, and, wow. and on the line, you can see, obviously, you know, all of our products for sale there. I had no idea that it was as large of an offering as you as you said. I mean, I was thinking, like, you and I had talked, and we I was thinking, you know, maybe some tools, maybe some toothpaste, but <laughs> some I didn't realize toothpaste. how big it was. <laughs> we do have a toothpaste plant. Yeah, oh. they do, see? I told you. <laughs> yeah. We have our own toothpaste, and we manufacture toothpaste for brand names that you go buy off the you know shelf at Walmart or whatever. Really? Really? I didn't know that it was like that. I just yeah. figured it was like your own brand, and yeah. Yeah, wow. no, we've got our own brand, and we do a little bit of contract manufacturing, and then cool. we've, uh, yeah, so... Jeez, this is uh, well, this is cool. Mind blown, yeah. Yeah, I always I always love getting under the hood of of companies that are doing things that we just don't you know normal people. It's not well, Facebook. It's not Amazon. Exactly. You're, you're giant companies doing crazy cool things. How would you say you guys are innovative? What what would you say is what makes is, you cutting edge? Yeah, yeah. What's what's I mean? You talking about more on the like the product side of things, or more on like how we operate, or both? Or We're both. A te- it's a technology well, yeah. podcast, yeah. so I mean, and you you feel yeah. free to go wherever but you at think the same is cool. Point, I still want to learn about Ultradent yeah. as well. Yeah, so. yeah. true. Yeah. It, exactly. Take it wherever you want to go. So one one example, in fact, I think where we met w- was uh, at this. Uh, local function where it was just speaking briefly on our initiative around like AI and machine learning yeah. and that kind of stuff, data warehousing. And so just as an example of that, um, like we use that for a number of functions within, you know, within Alternate, but an example of where we're being really innovative on the product side of it with it is we're using uh, analytics to help us in the R&D function develop new materials. And so if you think about like all the different possible combinations that could exist of different chemistries, I mean, it's literally the needle in the haystack type scenario, right? And so we're using AI and machine learning to narrow that size of that haystack down to the most likely combinations of materials that would give us the properties we're looking for. 
And so that's an example of where wow. IT and the that product innovation have kind of come together to help you know facilitate that. And another uh, another uh, AI mention. We, of we have had a lot of people on the show, and it, it, we can't go through a show without talking about AI in some form or fashion. Almost every company. I mean, it's just it's an edge that you get that you can't, you know, we can't do some of the stuff that AI can do in the way it's getting. What, what, I just gotta ask that, how, how do you feel AI wise? I mean, is it just a big giant piece of, of the pie now? Yeah, it's, it's, and it's growing rapidly. I would say that it's in a position, if you're familiar with like, uh, you know, hype cycles and things of that nature. If you look at the news today, you know, with, with chat GPT and all the mm-hmm. stuff that's going oh, on, it's, right. it's kind of reaching yeah. maximum hype, I think, out there in press right now, right? And people talking about it. But in practical terms, like if you've got a, a non-technology company like Ultradent, who manu- they're a manufacturer, yeah. we manufacture right. stuff, right? And so for us to be assimilating that in just our operations in multiple facets, multiple ways in finance, R&D, all sorts of different you know parts of the business, it's reaching a point, I think, on the hype cycle where it's becoming practical. Like it's no longer the kind of thing that only the Googles Magical, and Apples are cool playing th- with and you know, right. the people that are out there on the fringe. It's entering, I think, in my mind, that mainstream phase where if you're not doing something in that space to mature that capability, you're gonna start falling behind because the regular Joes are doing it now, not just the tech you know, giants. I, I think that is, that sums it up perfectly. Head, Cause yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think we're finally getting to that point where it's, it's getting easily accessible for everybody. And like you said, everybody's using it in some form or fashion. Yeah. That's uh, it's getting ubiquitous. I mean, everybody's uh-huh. kind of got to play with it now. And, 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 and I agree with you a hundred percent that Eventually, if we don't, like every company doesn't start understanding what, what they can do with AI, they're all going to fall behind. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I think we're all getting, well, most of us are getting that, but there's always industries that say, no, no, we're not going to pay attention. Yeah. And Speaking, I think, in my opinion, in mainstream terms, I think we're only a few years away from where if you're not doing it, you're at a competitive disadvantage. Yeah. And so I we're not so. that far from it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Wow. So let's dive in a little bit more. Like, so I know we, we kind of briefly talked about like the IT staff Structure. and that you guys have like 90, 90, you know, I, uh, staff of 90, but let's unpack that a little bit more. Um, yeah. What do you guys look for from a technology standpoint if somebody wants to, to come and join the, the, the Ultra Dent team? Yeah, so obviously, you know, the hard skills have to be there. So we, you know, want to make sure that we've got somebody who can actually do what we're looking for. So that, that kind of goes without saying. Um, but in addition to that, we look for people that are going to be a good culture fit and who have um, the same um, priorities in their life that kind of the, that the organization has. And what I mean by that is um, we always try to pay like a competitive wage, for example. We try to keep our, we, we, we subscribe to the data and we, we make sure that we're paying a competitive wage. But we're not, not going to be the highest payer out there. There's going to be some tech companies who can afford to do right. whatever, right? And we've got to compete with those folks. Um, and so what we try to offer is a situation where um, the overall satisfaction with the job is really high. And so we, and we do have some really low turnover rates to kind of prove that this. 20 uh, that years. It, right. yeah, that's exactly. impressive, exactly. man. That's proof in the pudding right there. <laughs> exactly. So we try to provide an entire package where um, it's more of a quality of life thing. So we, we pay a competitive wage so we can take that kind of off the table so they don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But then it's about who are the folks I'm working with? What are the technology you know systems that I get to play with and, and all that kind of stuff? And what I like about Ultradent from that perspective is we're large enough to do things right and invest in the right tools and capabilities and stuff, but we're still small enough that we can kind of be move fast in that space and be nimble and Agile not have the enough. red tape and, and minutia that a really large like Fortune right. 500 type company is going to have. And so I think we're in kind of a sweet spot. And so a lot of technical folks, I think, come into this environment and they're like, wow, this has got kind of a family vibe and feel to it. It's, you know, pretty low key. Um, um, but at the same time, I'm playing with some really cool, you know, technology, yeah. you know. and You're so, still on the cutting edge. Exactly. And so I think it's, it's for the, all those reasons. Like for me, ex- for example, you know, I've been here 20 years now, a little over 20 years. And every time I started to get that itch for like what's next, there was always that kind of that next opportunity, whether they do it was a promotion or new, you know, responsibilities or whatever. And so the, there was never that need to go look elsewhere. And so we really wow. try to focus on creating those opportunities cool. and investing in our people so that they can, you know, grow in their careers with us. Cool. We talk about culture a lot. We've had a lot of people on the show talking about culture, how important it is. 
but the proof is in the pudding and somebody sitting here that's been with a company 20 years that says there must be something pretty decent with the culture because people leave yeah people leave when the culture doesn't fit with them or it's just a toxic world uh, uh, we see that a ton uh, that just speaks volumes. We hear culture so often, but the fact that and and you say your turnover rate is is not very high. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say we're 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 below average on turnover rate. It's not that we don't have turnover; that definitely right. happens. Um, especially we're adjusting to some of the um, things that we have to deal with in this post-pandemic world, where I've got. Silicon Valley companies, you know, recruiting people in here, you know, th- those geographic can barriers be anywhere. are broken down. Yep. They're, they'll pay Silicon Valley wages, you know, to, you know, a Utah um, cost of living. And so there's those kind of things that we have to deal with. But that being said, yeah, the turnover is generally pretty low um, because we do set aside budget every year, you know, for things like conferences and training and technology, um, you know, labs, all that kind of stuff so that people can stay engaged and interested. Yeah. With, with that said, is that going to be a problem uh, This because of remote and everything and other companies? that can, it, Because even if the culture is amazing, man, if I'm getting three times the wage, it's a hard, that's a hard one. Is, do you think that's going to be worse or is this going to level out? I mean, just coming from, from your mindset or thought. I think we're focused on playing the long game. And the reason I say that is because, um, yeah, we're not going to compete with those folks on wages that are paying 3x or, you know, these, mm-hmm. these really astronomical rates. But, um, and people are going to go chase those. Um, but w- we've started to get, a, you know, a, an organization that is uh, made up of people that, that value other things in addition to that. And so the work-life balance and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we, in our IT organization, we're full hybrid, you know, work you know so if you want to work primarily from home and come in as needed and vice versa if you want to be in the office we provide that and so you know those kinds of things to be accommodating to you know what people's lives are actually like i think makes it to where you know people land here and they either move within a year or two because they've they've you know are chasing the dollar or they stick with us for a long time that's way they, cool. they kind of found a home yeah so i mean i know we kind of you, you, you did kind of dive into this already but in terms of like culture what does ultra Dent do to to make somebody feel comfortable other than you know like a, a work from home or a hybrid situation i mean do do you have like company get togethers is, is there a yoga room is there a yoga room you know we, we actually have a gym on site and uh. they do yoga in it so yes it's not <laughs> yes, a dedicated yoga room. Oh, baby, that's what <laughs> but, i'm talking but there about is there yeah that is there um so we do have an on-site you know is exercise there facility. foosball somewhere no no <laughs> we don't go full dot com you know as far right. as like, <laughs> um, yeah. i think we do have a ping pong table over in one of the buildings though <laughs> okay so very good yeah. you, you know i think the interesting part is a lot of startups and if you've been a part of startups you know they get excited they get their funding they get 20 million dollars they burn through it really fast and they don't stay around or, or you know the the long term is is the long game i think is what matters especially in the technology especially in the world of wanting to create something that has staying power and lasting a lot of those companies just get eaten up by companies i mean you, i'm sure you guys have had a few uh uh purchases or mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's it, when you're a company that knows what it's doing and it's not just trying to be crazy, uh, I think there's more staying power. So I personally believe that's going to all level out and these giant, you know, people trying to throw money at things. I mean, but I think that's kind of a question for Brad. I mean, you're the one that kind of fulfills that kind of stuff. I'm just curious your thought. I mean, I, yeah, I usually mean, don't ask you questions. I know you usually don't. Kinda I'm kind of kind of thrown off a little uh, bit. Yeah, but I'm curious <laughs> if your thought about this craziness of, of some companies hiring nuts. And, yeah. Or is that mellowing out? I mean, you would well, know. Well, I mean, you're starting to see, I mean, at least in terms of the course correction of the industry, I think you're starting to see a lot of changes where you're seeing these layoffs. But in my opinion, I think these companies had to grow because they had a new segment that they were never planning to to introduce when we all went remote so they had to offer all these different products and so you had all this development going on now that we've kind of started to shift back to normal you're seeing that kind of level out and that's where i think you're starting to see a bunch of these layoffs with that said yes i think i think you're still going to see a little bit of companies offering that three times salary but it's not going to be as often 
And truthfully, it, it may not be staying power. You'd be much better off to go with a company that has good culture, that's a good fit for you, and you get a decent wage. I mean, that to me, I mean, folks out there, most of the folks that are listening to the show are, are tech guys that mm -hmm. are, are girls, whatever, that are out there listening to. Tech guys you know, and gals. Yeah, tech guys and gals. So my two cents, you want to look for a, a solid company, been around, that, that yeah. shows staying power, that also shows a culture that people want to stay at. Yeah, and the, and the company definitely invests in, you know, the people from like a culture perspective. So, for example, like, we, you know, like every summer we have a big company party and we got 1,800 or so employees, right? And so and they're all over the world. Party. It's, it's a big party, especially <laughs> when you invite all the families and everything. It can turn into oh, thousands yeah. of people potentially. And so, like, we'll rent out the aquarium or we'll rent out the zoo or whatever and, and have, you know, get bring the family. There's hot dogs and, you know, and face painting and all that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, we have Santa Claus at the office, you know, at Christmas time. We do trick-or-treating in some of the, you know, parts of the building during Halloween. So we try to... Um, That's cool. It's a family-owned business. It's privately held, family-owned. And, and, the, and the family has tried to make sure that that culture gets infused doesn't into die. the organization and doesn't die. And so um, it definitely does have kind of that family. It's like it's a 40-year-old startup kind of when you think about yeah. it, the way that it feels, um, even though it's, it's That a is hard to company. keep that. I've seen so many companies go from startup to corporate, and they lose a lot of yeah. that, that ooey-gooey fun stuff. I've seen, you know, free sodas in the break room to – uh, the break room is gone. We had to put it in, make it into an office. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, this is cool. It's really cool to, to, to hear that we still have folks out there doing that or caring about that. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so kind of still staying on topic of like culture and what you guys look for in candidates. Help us understand what does your interview process look like? Does somebody have to go through two rounds of interviews, four rounds? Yeah, are you How hiring? Because I want a job. Because right? this sounds like the place I would love. <laughs> That's where we you are hiring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very good. There we go. There you All go. right. Sorry, man. I yeah. interrupted. No, no, if you're, you're listening, check the website. We have open positions. <laughs> very good. And we'll put it in the in the description in our yeah. in our um, in our in our notes. Yeah. So what's the process? That's what Bre yep. Brad so was asking. The process has matured a lot over time. So maybe I'll begin by real quick telling what it was like when I got hired at Ultra Dance. Ooh, so 20 let's, years I love ago, stories. I want to yes, know this. This Yeah, this is good. Um, so I got, I got brought in for a first interview and met with uh, the vice president of IT at the time and one of the senior engineers. And they gave me kind of a quick first round interview. You know, it was 35, 40 minutes, something like that, of just making sure that I... Um, had the skill set. Had the skill set, and, you know, does this guy seem like the kind of guy you'd want to work with? You know, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I passed that level, and so I ended up doing a second interview, and the second interview was literally with the entire IT department at the time. Oh, wow. And so they brought us into a large conference room, large horseshoe-shaped, you know, conference table, literally put me in a chair in the center of the horseshoe and just let the team fire away questions. <laughs> oh, and, like, because wow. he's going to be managing some of you guys. Do you guys want to wow. work with this guy? Ask him the questions. And, and, and we actually did that style for a while while we were smaller. And, and, you know, it was kind of more manageable at that point. Um, nowadays, it looks a little bit different. But we have, you know, full-time recruiters in our HR organization that help mm -hmm. us get the candidates in. They do some of the initial screening for us sometimes, depending on the position, um, just to make sure, at least on paper, it looks like this person is a good fit. Um, nowadays, what we tend to do is a quick either phone or just Microsoft Teams call or something as kind of a, a quick screen, usually a kind of a rapid interview, just to kind of check, like, all right, on paper, this individual looks pretty good, but let's just confirm a few things. And then if everything goes well on that initial screening interview, then we bring them in on site and do a face-to-face -face where we deep dive. Um, and sometimes it's just a single interview. Sometimes we'll have a couple of people interview them, either in a group or in some, you know, consecutive interviews. Um, but we try to be respectful of the candidates candidates time and everything and we've also learned too that the process needs to find a point where it's substantial enough to make sure that you're uncovering everything that you want to uncover but also not that it doesn't take too long because right. every, we a we want to get the position filled and be the, you know in a hot job market like we've had the last many years you can't wait too long as an employer you got to kind of be decisive in a responsible way hmm. so having said that like from start to finish how long does it generally take for you guys to to interview to onboard somebody um once we find a candidate that at least on paper looks good um we usually move pretty fast and so i think that you know if they go through all the checkpoints and everything um from the time that we got their resume to the time that they're starting it's usually you know i would say around four weeks would probably be the 
Okay. The overall, you know, when there's usually because you know giving notice to the yeah, I mean you have yeah that exactly. Nature. Um, a lot of times, what takes longer is just, especially for certain positions, is just getting those qualified candidates in the in finding the, the right the skill place. set. Exactly, and mm-hmm. so sometimes that can take a month or two depending okay. on the type of position. Cool. Awesome. Well, I think it's time that we ask the 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 question. I like these two <laughs> questions. I like these, love two, these, questions. these two last questions. What does the future look like for Ultra Dent? What what's the future? What what in technology specifically? Do you feel yeah. like there's some future stuff? There is some future stuff. We touched on one of them already. You know, around the data warehousing with the machine learning and that. So we're we're we still have a, a decent sized data center that we're running on premise, and we're systematically moving that to the cloud. We're primarily a Microsoft shop, mm-hmm. and so a lot of our stuff is going is to the there. Azure ecosystem mm-hmm. and. Uh, um, yeah, so there's a lot of that going on. But basically, I would say if I was to kind of give a big picture of what's going on, we have a very vertically integrated organization. So we do everything from R&D to manufacturing to quality control, sales, marketing, um, you know, IT, all the usual corporate functions, that kind of stuff. And so we have a really large application portfolio that do all these various things, manufacturing, all that kind of stuff. And so we just have a lot of digital initiatives going on at any given time. Because now, Hmm. again, kind of like with AI, it's no longer just fashionable. Like you've got to be at a certain level of maturity from a digital capability point of view in all these different disciplines where you're getting left behind. And so especially if you think about as a U.S.-based manufacturer, like there are certain things you've got to just do to really be competitive. And so one of the things that we're focused on from a future point of view in technology is the industry 4.0 or smart factory um, initiative. And so what does it mean to be a digital factory or a smart factory? And I'm spending a lot of time on that side of things. Does that, does that coincide with lean manufacturing or, or are those kind of two different coins? They're they're both Sides they're both the kind of attacking the same problem just from slightly different angles. So you know, lean is you know the, with the six sigma processes yeah. and everything is focused on eliminating waste and making sure that you're looking that you've got processes that are robust. Because I know in the past that's been everything they for think. manufacturing. They've exactly. been you know their whole world is is lean. And so what we've done basically in in recent years now is we've infused digital capabilities into that lean process. So it's how do you do all that six sigma work? and take advantage of digital capabilities to enhance that. So what does it mean to be lean in today's world? The definition is kind of shifting because yeah. you know, you're going from an analog world to a very digital world. And so we're still, for example, um, in the process of, of phasing out paper work orders in our manufacturing floor. And so we're in the process of rolling out a manufacturing execution system and completely digitizing the floor. But what we're doing is taking it, we're not just taking that piece of paper and doing paper on glass. We're actually going a step further and taking, going back to the Six Sigma principles and looking at the entire process end to end and saying, when we implement MES in this manufacturing line, uh, what is it that we're trying to accomplish here? And we we pull in the IoT stuff and everything so that everything, the entire process is digitized all the way through. So it's not just paper on glass, but we're actually saying, no, um, as an operator on this machine, when I go to weigh this material or whatever, the scale is weighing it and it's automatically inputting it into the menu. Yeah. It's doing all the quality control checks and everything to de-risk the organization, all that kind mm. of stuff. So we're bringing to bear all these digital capabilities that are just giving, uh, for example, the manufacturing folks just options they've never had before. And so it used to be a guy in a clipboard that would you know, make sure that things were being done correctly. And now we've got systems monitoring this. I mean, uh. that, that sounds amazing and that sounds awesome. But it's got to be one heck of a, a, a an undertaking. I mean, how do you how do you keep your sanity on something uh, like that? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> how do you know what? I guess I guess the bigger question is, how do you know what what to do and what when to implement certain you, technology features? You, you must have some super clear processes and procedures and. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. And, and, and we are getting better. Um, but we're definitely, a, this is a learning process for us because we do have a lot that we're trying to balance. And so it's, there's a lot of give and take. There's a lot of prioritization. But, you know, it's that classic how to eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. And so when you're trying to roll out something big like manufacturing execution system, that's pick a line and figure out how to do it for that line and then learn on that and move on to the next yeah. line. The bigger the boat, the, the the more you need to turn around, right? Exactly. And so, <laughs> exactly. And, and that's why we do have a decent size IT organization because we do have a lot of different moving parts, you know. Ah, that's cool. That's, that's way I, cool. I, I yeah. love it. We, we always like to end by asking kind of an outside question, and it goes with the last question. 
What do you think about technology in general for the future? Do you, any, any things that excites you in particular, not necessarily with the business or anything, just do you see anything on the horizon that, that gets you excited or that you think is gonna be a mainstay in the world? Yeah, I, I, and I think it's the same thing that everyone's kind of paying a lot of attention to right now with the artificial intelligence buzz that's going on out there right now. I think about like um, the changes to industry and to the world that have happened like during the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s around automation and you know what robots brought to you know manufacturing yeah. and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And now we're starting to see the equivalent of that for like knowledge workers and that kind of stuff with things like Chat GPT and stuff. And so when you can, um, you know, my guys are writing code by telling you know an AI, AI engine to give me a, a draft of this code create me a you know a function that does that and incorporate wow. these libraries and stuff and it cranks out a version one that's pretty dang good and they can just do some minor edits to it and insert that wow. code. so I think that what we're seeing and what excites me over the next world next you know decade or so is kind of like what does work look like for knowledge workers that you know the people in the offices we're being automated you know, how does that, like, what are the job descriptions for my son's going to look like, you know, exactly. 10, 20 years from now? They probably don't even exist today, right? Some of the jobs that these folks are going to be doing. And so I think that that knowledge worker side of things is where the next 10 years or 15 years is going to be exciting. Don't you think we're gonna, it's going to, the human creativity is going to be more involved because the, the, the grunt work or the coding where the grunt stuff of just putting information in or whatever that's going to be taken over by it so don't you think it, we're going to have the opportunity to be even more creative and more human i mean that's that's my my wonder is that the where it's going to go as long as ai doesn't take over and kill us all yeah. I, I, I'm I'm less of the Terminator viewpoint on AI <laughs> yeah, yeah, than good. I am right. more of like uh, the Luke and R two D two view. I think that if you've got AI as your co pilot helping you do things, um, right that on. that I think is what the next twenty years looks like is people becoming more I impactful and more efficient and more productive because they've got. I, uh, AI kind of augmenting their capabilities and accelerating what they can accomplish. I'm going to kind of question that one. And the only reason I question it is I'm not a coder, so I can't say this for sure, but I would think that if you're not knee deep in the, in the process of actually coding it, are you going to lose the, the functionality of the spur of the moment question or the spur of the moment thing that says, Oh, this can make this 10 times better. Is that, is that an issue? It mm. could it could be, but like schools, for example, are worried about this doing all the homework for the kids, right? And <laughs> so I think when it comes to a coding, it's kind of a similar function where I think it's amazing at giving you a first draft at the code. And so if it doesn't arrive in a very different place than you would have got there on your own, but it did it in five minutes instead of three hours, then you're almost foolish to not take advantage of these capabilities, right? Because everyone else is coding faster than you now. Right. And so I think that um, what it's going to do is it's going to lower the bar of entry. Because I think that, like, I think one industry within IT that maybe should be nervous about this is, uh, like, the low-code platforms and things of that nature. Because Agreed. Um, AI could probably just skip Wipe right over that yeah. and, and, you know, write you a robust SQL query just by asking it a question. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, I think that's going to that's going to change. But I don't see, I, I still think you're going to need different levels of coding capabilities and technical Agreed. capabilities. Um, but it's just going to make whatever level you're at faster and more productive. In fact, I think it was uh, the chief technology officer for Tesla just recently was talking about how he uses an AI engine to help him write his code because it's the only I'm foolish to not do it at this point. And so um, it's just making me more productive. Yeah, I mean, I get that. But <clears throat> Like I said, I mean, talking from a creativity standpoint, I just didn't know because I'm not a coder. I didn't know if maybe you get spontaneously inspired by something as you're writing that code. I mean, do you I, I, I guess I'm kind of questioning, is there something where that you're losing that that creativity in, in that sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if creativity is really going to be impacted because also when you're using these kinds of tools, you're constantly refining it and training it. And so the human element okay. is still in the feedback so it's loop. Still there. Okay. And, yeah. and it's still, there's a there's a, a end result that the company wants for that that product or whatever they're developing, right? And if, yeah. I, if I'm the CEO and I say, hey, we want our company to do this, then the coders just go, we just need to do this, however that however we do that yeah. right that's not Doesn't really how it's done. a creative and and if the ai can get you there really fairly quickly and then you clean it up how much how much really insight do you do you need to put into that if 
that's what the CEO's for, right? To have all the dreams <laughs> and the vision, I hope, or whatever. You would think. <laughs> and maybe it lets the IT person focus more on the problem they're trying to solve rather than the exact lines that's of true. code that are being written, yeah. right? And, exactly. And, and so I think maybe it's just a little bit of a shift in what they're spending their brain power on. Oh, Fair man, enough. this is good stuff. I, I, show's always fun to get insight from folks that are in the thick of it and seeing what's going on. I, I love it. Brad, any, any last words? No, I mean, I've, I've given my two cents. I think I'm good. How can people get a hold of you? Can they get a hold of uh, the company if they're looking for jobs or, or whatever? H how do people find out? Yeah, so if you want to learn more about the company or any open positions, ultradent.com. Ultradent.com. So, yeah, we'll post them all in there. Check it out. And you can reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn. If you just search for me, you'll find me and, and reach out to me there. Very awesome. good. Awesome. Simple as that. Well, you know the drill, people. You have been listening to The New IT. We'll see you next time.